Sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known in seasons of distress and grief my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return sweet hour of prayer all right friends welcome again to this midday power surge august 20th 2019 our thematic scripture psalm 55 and verse 17 evening morning and at noon will i pray and cry aloud and he will hear my voice welcome one welcome all that song has just catapulted all of us into this midday power surge you know friends the great controversy between christ and satan is over the law of God and over our minds. Who are we going to serve? Who are we going to worship? Who are we going to obey? And in these last days, we are either going to have the mind of God or the mind of Satan. You know, Matthew 22 and verse 37, Jesus says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy what? With all thy mind. Psalm 10 and verse 4, it says the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. And Revelation chapter 18 verse number 2 tells us in the last days, the majority of individuals are going to be demon possessed. They will become the habitation of devils. All right, friends, thank you for your prayers. We have just returned from this funeral memorial service in Orlando. Thank you. It was a blessing. Keep the James family in your prayers. Friends, we're living in a time as I segue into this all-important midday power surge presentation. We are living in a time we're in the leaders of our nations do not have the answers for the present crises that they are encountering. And God's people are to be the ones to educate them, not to unite church with state, but to teach them how to govern. Ministry of Healing, page 183, sets the stage. It says this, but there are not many, even among educators, and statesmen who comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of society. Those who hold the reins of government are unable to solve the problem of poverty, pauperism, and increasing crime. They have no solution to solve the increase in crime. They are struggling in vain, we are told, my friends, in vain. And President Trump is now looking to the evangelicals, the apostate Protestants for answers. All they can tell him, unite church and state. Let's force people to worship. Let's force people to become moral. Let's enact a theocracy in America. That is unbiblical. That is inimical to God's will, God's word, and God's purposes. The evangelicals. 
the Robert Jeffries of the world don't have the answer. The Paula Whites of the world don't have the answer. Why? They are forsaken the word of God. They are forsaken the law of God, God's Ten Commandments. They don't have a clue. They are ignorant, like novices. They are inept to solve these problems. Anyway, volume 8, Testimonies for the Church. Volume 8, page 153 says, Every institution that bears the name Seventh-day Adventist should be to the world as Joseph was in Egypt. And Daniel and his and his three fellows were in Babylon. In Egypt, was there a crisis? Talk to me, safe to serve. Was there a crisis? Who was brought in to solve it? Joseph. In Babylon, several times, were there crises? Who was brought in to solve them? Daniel, the three Hebrews. Now watch this, friends. Let's focus now on these news reports regarding mental health. What are we going to focus on today? Mental health. Headline, President Trump says he'll focus on mental health, not gun control. I'm not going to address this from the previous perspective, saying based on prophecy, God's word, God's people are going to be declared, labeled as mentally sick. That's not where I'm going today. Listen up, friends. Next headline. Trump should stop using mental illness as an excuse to do nothing on guns. Next, Trump shifts from background checks to mental illness reform at New Hampshire rally. Next, we have to start building institutions again. Donald Trump again links guns and mental health. I'm going to play an audio clip for you. And notice over and over again how President Trump states the following. He links mass shootings and crimes with mental illness, number one. He says nobody wants to talk about mental illness. Number three, let's build institutions to solve mental illness and mass shootings. Then he says we must study mental illness and that is what we are going to address in a few moments listen to what this says my friends very very crucial we are living in the last days we're going to look at that very closely and we're looking at the whole gun situation i do want people to remember the words mental illness these people are mentally ill and nobody talks about that but these are mentally ill people and people have to start thinking about it. I think we have to start building institutions again because, you know, if you look at the 60s and 70s, so many of these institutions were closed and the people were just allowed to go onto the streets. And that was a terrible thing for our country. They closed them. Cities couldn't afford them and they closed them. I mean, I can tell you in New York, they closed a lot of them and the people went out. They went out onto the streets and it's a terrible thing. But a lot of our conversation has to do with the fact that we have to open up institutions we can't let these people be on the streets and we don't want to see crazy people owning guns but i also want to remember that mental illness is something nobody wants to talk about these people are mentally ill and we have to study that also because you know it's them they pull the trigger the gun doesn't pull the trigger they pull the trigger so we have to look very seriously at mental illness and we're doing that at a level that hasn't been done before all right, friends, there it is. It's clear that he's saying we need to study mental illness. Now, what is the source from which we must study and address mental illness? Should it not be the word of God? Talk to me, say to serve. What is that source? As we must study mental illness, then what does the Bible say about mental health? That's where we're going today, my friends. All right, let's begin. Get your writing instruments. Get your notepads. How does the Bible say that God created man and woman in the beginning? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, verse 27, and verse 31. The Bible tells, talk to me, save to serve. How? The Bible tells us that God did create man in his own image, his own likeness. And verse number 20, verse 31, not 27, verse 31 says that God pronounced creation and mankind very good. 
But after creation, what did Adam and Eve do? They sinned. And once Adam and Eve sinned, whose mind did they have? Talk to me, safe to serve. Whose mind did Adam and Eve have after they sinned? Would you agree? Based on scripture, the mind of Satan. Thank you, Ben You. The devil. Jennifer, Satan's mind. Thank you, Suze. Satan's mind. June White, Satan's mind. Write this down. John chapter 8, verse 44, verse 44. John 8, 44. The Bible says, You are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you would do. He was a murderer from the beginning. He was a liar. He's a liar and the father of it. So what is at the root cause of these mass shootings? Crime, violence. These people have whose mind? The mind of Satan. And mere mental institutions with pharmaceutical drug poisons will not solve the problem. And joining church and state will not solve the problem. Forcing people to become moral will not solve the problem. Mark chapter 7, same point. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through verse 23. It says, from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. What, my friends? Evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Now tell me, come on, say to serve, what was the condition of mankind just before the flood? In Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5, what was the condition of man? The Bible tells us what? The Bible says what, my friends? The wickedness. Okay, Samara, evil. Thoughts continually. Lexi, evil continually. How would it be in the last days? We know Matthew 24, right? Verse 37 through verse 39. Let me give you another golden scripture. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 16 through verse 18 gives us the context of the last days. And verse 7, when I read verse 7, tell me what comes to mind. Verse 7, Isaiah 59, verse 7 says, Their feet run to evil. Their feet, don't forget that. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to, sh to shed innocent blood. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. What comes to mind, my friends? What comes to mind? The mass shootings. That's it. We're here. The thoughts of men are evil continually. Yes, Courtney. They are demon possessed. Mary B. Evil mind. Wonderful. After I read this scripture. Now, friends, tell me if there is any hope for us in these last days. Romans chapter 8, verse 6, verse 7. The Bible says, for the carnally minded is death. The what mind? Is death. But the spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. It's not subject to the civil laws. Neither indeed can be. It's the mind that's the problem, my friends. And the civil government cannot force the mind. They'll try. But they will destroy liberty of conscience. That's it, the mind. Is there any hope for us, my friends? The Bible says neither indeed can be. The mind is carnal. Is there any hope for us? Talk to me, safe to surf online right now. Midday power search. In whom is our hope? Our hope and only hope is in Jesus. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. What did Christ promise to put between the woman and Satan? Between the woman's seed and Satan's seed. What's the word? 
Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. What is that word, my friends? It's enmity, Ryan Hall. Thank you. It's enmity. What does that word mean? It means hatred. So can we crush Satan's head? Can we bruise Satan's head? Is there hope for us? It's a promise, my friends. Now watch this. Christ has already gotten victory for us. It's up to us to make the choice, to make right choices. Is that point clear? If it's clear, send in those amens, my friends. Those thumbs up. Romans chapter 8, verse 3 to verse 5. The Bible says, for what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. For what purpose? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Watch the choice now. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind, what's that word? Do mind the things of the flesh. But those who are walking after God's spirit, they mind the things of the spirit. Is that point clear? We have to make the right choices. I'll get to that. Isaiah 26, verse number 3. God's word says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who's what? Talk to me, safe to serve. If you know it, talk to me. Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Who's what? Whose mind, Deidre Hunt, whose mind is stayed upon thee. Thank you. Because he trusteth in thee. Now, friends, talk to me. What practical ways, what practical things can we do to keep our minds stayed on Jesus? What practical things can we do? Let me start you off. What about reading God's word? All right, Jennifer Smith, praying to God. What else, my friends? Listening to God's word. Michelle, thank you. Having Bible studies. Shirley, meditation. Okay, singing the hymns. Justin Graham, singing the hymns. Committing a text to memory daily. That spiritual life may exist in the soul. Last day events, page 66 and page 67. What about Philippians chapter 4? Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, verse 8, it says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Then it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what must we do? Think on these things. This is the solution, my friends. But what are these people viewing? The filth on the television, on the internet, on cable network. What are they ingesting? Pharmaceutical drug poisons. They have been hypnotized. They are drunk, intemperate. And you're telling me giving them more drugs will solve mental problems? Just joining church and state and forcing people to become moral will work? Won't work, my friends. Again, that's why we're told the sins of the world lie at the doors of the church. Pause right there. Isaac. You just posted, they're also playing what? Video games. Watching competitive sports, even the pugilistic sports, the wrestling, the boxing. They, 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 what the rest, that, that, that M, M and A? What's that kickboxing thing called again? Talk to me, safe to serve. You know what I'm talking about. And any, any, Yes, contact sports. Okay, thank you, Orlando. MMA. Nicole, thank you. MMA. All right, my friends. And notice, there's a prominent MMA fighter now who is also under uh, scrutiny. 
going to the courts. All right, it tells you they're mentally infirmed. Come back here. And any experience that's contrary to Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 8 is causing mental problems. Demon possession. Write down Romans chapter 1, verse 28. God's word says, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. What did they not like to do? To retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. What mind? A reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. What does reprobate mean? Reprobate, it means rogue, profligate, despicable, depraved, degenerate, heinous, atrocious. That's it, my friends. All these things, immoral, corrupt. Look at the life of Nebuchadnezzar. Talk to me. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4? What happened to him? As he rejected God, did not want to retain God in his knowledge. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar when he said, Is this not great Babylon which I have built filled with pride? What happened to Nebuchadnezzar? All right, Crystal. He was transformed into an animal. He became animal-like. But by and by was he converted. Yes. And what led, what assisted in his conversion? What was Nebuchadnezzar eating for those seven years? A plant-based diet. So what is God telling us, my friends? Many people who are mentally infirmed, demon-possessed, one of the triggers and uh, the causes is the diet, the perverted diet. The animal, the flesh-based diet. The life of the flesh is in the blood. That's it, my friends. And the Bible also says that Nebuchadnezzar, for those seven years, was drenched, inundated with the dew of heaven, the rain from heaven. And what is that dew? A symbol of the Spirit of God. I'll post that scripture below. What about in Mark chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 20? Was there a demoniac? You could go read that. Was there a demoniac, my friends? Are people today demon-possessed? Go read Revelation 18, verse 2. Where was that demoniac dwelling? As a matter of fact, before I go there, what happened as that demoniac approached Jesus? What did Christ's disciples do? They fled. What's happening now? The churches are fleeing. They have no answer to solve the mental problems, the demon position in the world. They have no solution. But Christ has the solution. Mark chapter 5 verse 3. He was dwelling in the tombs. What do we put in tombs? The dead. So what would be the application? So, so, so those, I was going to say a few things. So those who are watching, listening, to those things that lead to death, the dead. No wonder they're demon possessed. And the Bible says in Mark 6 verse 5, he was cutting himself with stones. Now tell me, since he was cutting, hurting, abusing himself with stones, what would he have done to somebody else if he had caught them? Crimes violence but the bible says in verse 6 when he saw jesus he ran and bowed and worshiped him was the man suicidal thank you francis saban he was also suicidal cutting himself what is the solution where is that found in jesus my friends and the bible tells us in mark 5 verse 15 after Christ, it says, and they came to Jesus and seeing him that was possessed with the devil and had the lesion sitting at the feet of Jesus and clothed and in his right mind. That's it, my friends. Clothed in his right mind. Where was he sitting? At the feet of Jesus. So what is the answer for mental problems? Demon possession. Like Mary, 
Okay, I just saw someone put it in the chat. Like Mary who sat at the feet of Jesus, my friends. All right, come back here. But what about Mark chapter 1, verse 21 through verse 28? That demoniac in Mark chapter 5, we could say, in some sense, points to people in the world. But Mark chapter 1, there was a demoniac in the church on the Sabbath. And in Mark chapter 1, verse 23, through verse 24, the Bible says he was possessed with an unclean spirit. And when he saw Christ, what did he say? Let us alone. Listen what this says in Ministry of Healing, page 91. The cause of this man's affliction also was in his own life. The man had been fascinated with the pleasures of sin and had thought to make life a grand carnival. Intemperance and frivolity perverted the noble attributes of his nature and Satan took entire control of him. There are multitudes today who are truly under the power of evil spirits as was the demoniac of Capernaum. All who willfully depart from God's commandment are placing themselves under the control of Satan. Many a man tempers with evil, thinking that he can break away at pleasure, but he's lured on and on until he finds himself controlled by a will stronger than his own. But the Savior spoke with authority and set the captive free. My friends, we have to pay attention. Mr. Trump is saying mental health is the problem and many times we look only at the world. But in the Bible, many were mentally infirm in the, in the church. They're cold and hot. Sometimes hot, sometimes cold. In the fire, in the water. In the water, in the fire. Lukewarm, Laodiceans, my friends. So what are some practical things that we can do to have mental health? Sacred music. Now, with sacred music, which person comes to mind? who was once demon-possessed, but sacred music set him free for a time from demon possession. Okay, K-Math, that was King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 23 as David, the Bible says, played skillfully on the harp. Saul was loosed from the demons. Saul was refreshed and the evil spirit left him. But what music are these people in the world, in the church listening to? No wonder they are demon possessed. Mental health, my friends, and most of these churches. What kind of music do they play in the churches? That's it, my friends. Burla music with a syncopated beats. Rhythms, we're here, my friends. We have to address mental health. Here we are, my friends. And then we come to more practical things. We have to choose. What must we do? Okay, Rosalind Mayers, the drums. But let's move on. We have to choose. Christ has won the victory for us, but we have to choose. What must we do, my friends? We have to choose, make the right choices. We are told in Joshua 24, verse 15, we have to make the right choice. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, we have to make the right choice. Write down, steps to Christ. Please, friends, read that. Steps to Christ. Page 46, page 47, the governing power in man is choice. Many of us say, Lord, I'm going to do what's right. And then we go back into sin. What's the problem? We don't understand the true force of the will. So Mr. Trump is saying, put them in mental institutions. Let's give them drugs and pill. Oh, Mr. President, it's not pill power that people need. 
It's will, power that people need. James chapter 4, verse 7, verse 8. God's word says, submit yourselves, therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Now someone just posted the experience of First Kings chapter 18. As the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove were playing and dancing to word the music, what were they doing to themselves? They were cutting themselves. Just as in Mark chapter 5, that demoniac, the word, the music. Thank you, Tamika Atkinson. You get the point. Let's come back. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. We have to choose. I'm going over time today. Midday power surge. It says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of of Christ. That's it, my friends. Romans chapter 12, verse 1, verse 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But be you not conformed to this world, but be you what? Talk to me, safe to serve, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's it, my friends, that you may prove what is good, acceptable, perfect will of God, my friends. We have to choose. Tell them no more drugs, no more smoking, no more drinking, no more flesh foods, no more stimulating foods. No more caffeinated beverages. No form of intemperance. Titus chapter 2 verse 6. Young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. All right, my friends. And here is how we're going to conclude. We shall conclude with hope. If these words were meet in due season. For you safe to serve at this midday power surge. Send in those amens. Those thumbs up. All right. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Jesus says, let this mind. Let this what? Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7. So this is a command. Instruction. Whenever we read an instruction, ask God for strength to carry it out. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Here's the hope. Here's the hope, my friends. Here it is. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul says on the inspiration, God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and what mind? Talk to me, safe to serve, and what mind? And a sound mind. Thank you, Crystal. A sound mind. It's already given. A sound mind. We must now choose, my friends. Go back and read Steps to Christ, page 46, page 47. What's a sound mind? What does sound mind mean? No, friends, send in those prayer requests. What is a sound mind? Sound mind. Ah, oh, my friends, that's talking about disciplined, sober, sound mind, your focus, spiritual, making right choices, a sound mind. So, my friends, what are our members, the avenues to our soul? Must we not guard them? That's why my wife, Hillary, will sing the song of take my life and let it be and as she sings send in your prayer request the prayer team is prepared to pray for those prayer requests listen friends take my life and let it be consecrated lord to Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of thy love, at the impulse.
fullness of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Always only for my King. Take my lips and let them messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold, not a might would I withhold. Take my will and make it thine. It shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. It shall be thy 